on the show, we're taking a look at OutRun 2, Mario Party 6, Pirates, and in Versus, it's Lord of the Rings The Third Age against Knights of the Old Republic 2. Some of the games we look at and reviews on the run are intended for a mature audience. Please pay attention to each game's ESRB rating. All right, you guys, we're going to get started here with OutRun 2. This one is uh, made by Sega and co-published by Sega and Microsoft for the Xbox. Well, I got to say that the original OutRun game in the arcade was always one of my personal favorites here, yeah. OK? Yeah, it was now, awesome. Now, OutRun 2 came out in the arcades a couple years right, ago, right? right? Now we have an Xbox version here. That's correct. OK. My so far, you're right on every count. Here. Yes. Now, my problem is this, though. Yes. Is that the graphics, the uh, everything about this game seems about 10 years old. Now, now we've put... Now, that's 10 okay. years old. Come on. It looks Nine like it may old. be a, a, a first-generation PlayStation 2 game. Is not right? e no. no. Come on. Are you yes, kidding yeah, me? Does. No. It does. Yes, it does. It's not good. at all. Nice car renders. The uh, if, the backgrounds are colorful. It's i got to judge this against other driving games. Burnout 3. And, and that is unquestionably Need for Speed 2 the Underground. best arcade racing game I've ever played. I, I think you agree with look me. Look at the graphics yeah. of that game. I know. The graphics in Outrun 2 aren't that bad. I, I no, wasn't, no, they are. I don't think they are. I think they're no, no, very I think, cartoony. I think they are, mister. I think you're wrong. <laughs> very hyper-realistic, crazy, cartoony visuals. If you're not into the sort of weird, you know, crazy driving style of this game, you're not going to enjoy the but experience But the thing is this, is that OutRun in the arcades, going back long, and again, I love the old arcade game, yeah. but OutRun, you're not even racing against each other. That you're just trying to if get from point A time. to point B. Exactly. And it's that's 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 outdated. Point to point racing. I, I, I don't mean, disagree on, with you. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that there's Grand not, enough, Auto, there's that's not like... enough meat in this game for it to be, uh, you know, a, exactly. a, a super crazy hey. experience and everybody rushes out to buy it. If they were selling this game for $9.99, yeah. then, then I could... That'd be amazing. Then I, then that would that'd be, be cool. But this is really, it's an ac it's an anachronism, you know? It's one of those types well, of things. Well, I don't things. know what that is, but if that means bad game, <laughs> then it is. Then I agree it's with one, you. It's one of those kinds of games that people that don't play games think about when you say the word video game. The good thing about the game is how accessible Sim it is. Well, simple. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's the most simple game. Get to point A to point B, you well, have a bunch of branching, it's old school. You have it's a bunch school. of branching pads, a bunch of pipes pyramids. that you race by. I said the pyramids. Uh, there's Balloons. tulip. Castle factories, castle Castles. walls. I also like the fact that it has all these beautiful Ferraris in the game. Well, that's I was going to say that that's my my favorite part is that yeah. it, it takes all it's all the Ferrari stuff, right? So you got the F50, you got the 360, the Dino, they even have the old classic I stuff. That was and that's cool. really the best part of the game. But then again, they look nothing like Project Gotham Racing. The no, Ferraris in that this, game. This is not Project Gotham. It's no, not it's Need not. for Speed. No, it's, it's not. It's not Burnout. No. But it, it is. It's a game that you could have probably put on my cell phone no, and still on. got the same results. Yeah, you know what I'm on. saying? I liked all the little challenge mini game things there's as well. No, you know, I like that kind of the stuff. The thing is, is that there's, there's no artificial intelligence on the cars either. The no. other cars that you're driving, you're just. They're just there on the road there driving. Obstacles. They don't try to speed up. They don't right. try to slow down. They don't try to box you. They don't try to sure piss you off of in any way. Now, you do get to race people when you play the game on Xbox Live, and that's pretty fun. What or, about heart attack mode or whatever the heck it's called? Uh, where where you're, you're trying to, like, get the girl in the car yeah, trying to, to get her to heart like meter you, go up. To like you more right, by, by doing, passing cars. No, she's telling you what to do driving-wise, and if you do what she's asking. Just what you need. Some some girl sitting next to you telling you how to drive. That's always fun. Yeah, put that in the game. Sure. Right, right. Where's the ejection seat? Where's the ejection seat? So seat? what are you gonna give Outrun to? I gotta give this a 4.5. 4.5. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, it's that's just crazy. the quality level is just that's too low way for too me. Low. I'm giving it a seven. On the positive side, if you like the original Outrun game, you're gonna dig this new version. Online play is pretty fun, and I think the best thing about Outrun 2 are all the mini games. On the negative side, in the single player mode, all you're doing is trying to get from point A to point B. There's no artificial intelligence on any of the other vehicles. And if you're looking for the latest, greatest driving game graphics, you might want to look somewhere else. Stick around, you guys. The constant stream of colors continues after the break. We're taking a look at Mario Party 6.
Well, despite what some golfers say, sometimes it's just too miserable outside to golf. I know some golfers will play in anything, but if you're not one of those types of golfers, you might want to check out Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005 for your DS, which is what I have right here. It's a pretty sweet looking golf game. I got to say, it's one of the first 3D golf games available for a handheld system and EA's done an okay job for their first year on this system. One of the big innovations with this game obviously is that it uses the stylus to do the swing meter and if you go too far to either side you can either slice or hook the ball. I gotta say that it's not incredibly accurate the way that this thing reads the stylus movements. Visually the characters look pretty good. It's not the best look in 3D but it's pretty good that it's on a handheld system. Overall, this is a decent first attempt at 3D golf on a handheld. I'm gonna give the DS version of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2005 a 7.5 out of 10. Now we're talking about Mario Party 6. This one was uh, developed by Hudson Soft, published by Nintendo for the GameCube. And this is the sixth Mario Party game. Well, more importantly, it's the sixth Mario Party right. in the last six years. Yeah, they Hudson keep making is, them. Hudson's come it's out like with the new one Madden. every single year. And exactly, it's like it's like Madden. <laughs> and I've always been a big fan, in fact, of, of the Mario, Mario Party. Party games. You know, I think of all the party type games out there, Mario Party has consistently done them the best. Yes, and consistently. I, I, I've tried some of the other ones, like uh, what was that Namco one? I couldn't stand. Pac-Man. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, some of the other. Party Crash games, Bash was good. I didn't like that one that Crash much. Crash Bash was but good. But Mario Party has been good. It's just that you know the question is, are they stretching this? idea a little bit thin by this point and the answer is yes I've taken steps away from the series haven't played the game for a few iterations uh -huh. so getting back into Mario Party 6 was a little bit new for me uh, okay and I gotta say that if you haven't played one for a while this one isn't a bad one to jump into one of the cool things that they've done this time they've given you a microphone so you can have all of these different sort of voice activated mini type games well it's not all of them there's pretty much two different styles that the microphone comes into play with one of them you're kind of controlling the character on screen you know up left down and, and they kind of react right and the other one is which i like is you actually answer questions it's like a quiz show kind of thing now when i put the microphone in i was trying to use it like i was in lifeline remember that game for the playstation too. Right. So I was trying to, I was talking to the princess going, close off, close off, but, but she wasn't listening. You're a sad man. But the biggest thing that Mario Party lacks though is the real originality from going from like Mario Party 4 or 5 right. to 6. It's starting to get just a little drawn out. And I'll tell you something else, the presentation, again. Not that great. The characters' graphics. Look, I played Mario Power Tennis. Yeah, they look better in that. The characters Absolutely. look a lot better, so, you know, let's. it's time to update. If you're going to do another like, iteration, this is let's not, update it. This is not one of those games that you scrutinize like every other kind of platform action-adventure type thing. It, this is a, a No, a you want it to look better, though. It, it looks uh, it okay. Could, it, could, it, looks it looks okay. okay. I mean, looks you get like your candy. family together. It looks let's, like candy. Let's review this for what, the, like, the audience that they're going to play it with. They're going to have a bunch of friends or, or family together. They're going to play this thing. Everything is very easy to play. There's 80 different mini games which are good yeah there's 11 playable characters which is good yeah there's six different worlds that you can you know they change night to day different different mini games start appearing based on the time of day what i'm saying is that if you already own four or five yeah, absolutely the little microphone attachment isn't, isn't enough of, isn't an, enough an, upgrade. of an upgrade i did like the fact that unlike the earlier Mario Party games that I've played, this one is a lot easier to play in single player. It's not so laborious, you know, you can zip through everything, you can take all the instructions out of the, uh, the factor so you don't have to, you know, keep reading stuff as you're working your way through the game. I'm giving Mario Party 6 an 8 out of 10. I'm giving it a 7. On the positive side, there are 80 different mini games to enjoy in this one. The single player experience isn't as tedious as it used to be. And if you're looking for something that you can play with your family, this is a great choice. On the negative side, I would have liked to have seen the production quality, like the music and graphics, be a little more updated. And although the microphone was a new addition, it didn't seem to warrant enough for a whole new version of the game. Today, we have something very interesting. I know it looks like Tommy's wearing a phone, but he's not. He's wearing a wireless Xbox headset. This is from Logitech. and. It's absolutely 100% cordless. It is a 2.4 gigahertz device. 
It's got a built-in rechargeable Hello? battery. No, Hello? it's, not, it's not a phone. I just told them it's not a phone. Oh. Yeah, but you can use it with Xbox Live. That Look, plugs into the controller. For people with really big ears and heads, it's adjustable. It, you can you can clip it on. My ears aren't that big. It's the, got a, uh, the volume thing is right here, so you can you know make it louder or softer like this. Which is a little bit of a problem sometimes because sometimes if if audio is coming in too loud and you can't see what button you're pressing because it's on your ear, you can press the buttons. You know, you press the wrong one and make it louder or something like that. You pretty much you, pop it in your mouth. Uh, I was gonna use that thing. Oh. It's pretty light, and you don't even really you can't even really tell it's there no, at all. No, it works quite well. The and audio quality it. is awesome. You have to charge it. When you're done, you got to put it on the the, the back on the a charger. There's recharger. Yep. And it, so it's it lasts for about five or six hours. If you put it on standby mode and just sort of put it to sleep for a while, it'll stay charged for a long time. And I thought the you know the the range quality you can be 30 feet away from your Xbox if you have the wireless controller as well. The only problem with this cordless headset. It's about 80 bucks US. Whoa, ho, hey. I'm gonna recommend it for people who can afford it. For people on a budget, there's other things out there yeah. that are just as good. Probably just stick with the standard headset. Right, yeah. yeah. On the positive side, the cordless headset is nice and light. It's very well designed and sci-fi looking. And the audio quality is very good. On the negative side, the price point is a little high. The buttons are on the side of the thing, so you have to take it off to adjust the volume. And it only has about a six hour talk time, so you're gonna be out of luck for all your Halo 2 marathons. All right, you guys, stick around. We're coming right back with a look at Sid Meier's Pirates after this. Arr! Games, we take games seriously. All right, now here's a game that was on a couple of different platforms, Dragon's Lair 3D. Now I know what you're saying, Dragon's Lair, how can that be a buried treasure? It's one of the most successful arcade games ever of all time, but they came out with a console version a couple years ago called Dragon's Lair 3D, and it was really unbelievable. It was like a 3D cartoon. They really did an excellent job of taking the whole Dirk and Daphne, you know Daphne, right? You know what I'm talking about. Taking her into the whole 3D environment world. The music was incredible. The gameplay was very derivative of the original, so they put you in those worlds that were in the original arcade game. The backgrounds were incredible, the effects were awesome, and it was a really challenging, fun game. All the characters, the dragons in there, of course. I totally recommend picking up Dragon's Lair 3D. Okay, we're back. We're gonna talk now about Sid Meier's Pirates. This is for the PC. Now, what'd you think of this one? Well, you know, I, I'm really into the whole pirate thing. I like pirate stuff. And I've even been known to dress like a pirate every now and then, but I gotta say that we're gonna argue on this one, I have a feeling, because yep. I did not like this game at all. I love this game. Uh, I was really, really impressed with let this me game. Tell you, okay, well, let me tell you why, why I was so adverse to this. The first thing is the production quality. I mean, it's just, the production quality was so low. I thought they took way too many shortcuts no, in it's, it's telling a, the story and, and the playing I, the game. I'll give you, can I give you some examples? I, I think boys, you're wrong. shake your head. I think you're wrong. I, well, think, let it me looks, tell you. I think it looks great. Let me it tell you, it doesn't great. look great at yes, all. Yes, it does. I would agree with you. Like, the music, for example, is really well done. It's well written. Yeah, it's like sea chanties and old but pirate tunes. But because it's and... so MIDI sounding and so, like, PC from the 80s, I like the sound. it draws me out. I thought but the music but, was but cool. would you admit that it would sound no, better I, if it had live instruments? Absolutely. All right, so the okay. music writing is good. Yes, and it'd be nice if it was all live. Second, no voiceovers. They use like a simlish style voice thing to talk, tell the story. Which Every once in a fine. while. It's but not this that is kind of my game. But this is it's, my biggest problem. Wait, wait, here, here it is. It's not okay? an action there's, there's this map, and there's all the different little towns and villages and cities that you yeah. can travel to. It's a Caribbean, Every, it's a Caribbean right. ocean. Okay. Every single time you go into a new city they give you you know do you want to see the governor or the mayor yep. or do you want to go to the tavern and right. all this they give you the same exact five things yes and every time you go into the tavern let's say oh i want to go into the tavern in this town 
every single one is exactly the same graphic with the same exact amount no, of people. They change it the up a little same bit. costumes. They little they're bit. in the same exact place. They change it up this a little bit. This is ridiculous. Every but time you, you see the governor, it's either the governor's in the office or the mayor's on the grass. It's the same but you know exact what, you know thing what they've done every here. single they've time. They've simplified the whole thing. It's not like you're walking into these towns. They've streamlined the sort of storytelling of the game to give you just all the hit points. They took about four or five different genres of gaming, tried to mash them all together, and they didn't pull off any of them oh, well. You know what? Don't give me five, diff six different moves and put it, them on a keypad, and I have to press the keys. It's still fun. What's the it's deal? It's still fun. Why could they, the why and couldn't they give me and control? The low why couldn't they give me control? It's Explain. That, it's the gameplay they went with to to get because all of this stuff into a game. You can play it on a laptop computer. Why couldn't I control my sword? Depth. Don't let me have to push. You do buttons. have control of the sword swipes. You do it. it is a timing a thing. It's a it's a paper rock scissors thing, but you paper, do have control, rock, scissors. and it is fun. You know what I'm saying? And they throw in yes. all kinds of other Paper elements rocks into this and game. scissors Don't are very so fun. Short. Sailing around ships. How yes. is that fun? It's great. It's, it's how, really fun. Keyboard, controlling it from the keyboard. It's a, it's a computer it's game. It's fun. If this game came out 10 years ago, I can understand. It did. It's an update to a game that came out 10 years ago. This hey, is one of Sid Meier's games. I rest my case. Games. I'm giving Sid Meier's Pirates 9 out of 10. I'm giving I love it this game. a 5.5. 5. You're insane. You're insane and you're brutal. On the positive side, Pirates is a very easy game to get into, and there's lots of depth to uncover. There are lots of fun activities that you can do in the game. But the best part of all is just the sense of ambiance it creates. It's really fun being in the pirate universe. On the negative side, the production quality from the MIDI music to the same exact scenes used every time was kind of poor. I wanted to have more control of the characters during fighting, and even if you overlook those things, although there's lots of different gameplay elements, it all gets repetitive very quickly. Man, I can't believe you didn't hey, like Pirates. Hey, I normally like Sid Meier's stuff. We just got to bring the production quality into the 21st century. Well, stick around. We're coming right back with Versus. It's two movie-based RPGs. It's Knights of the Old Republic 2 against The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. The Hit List. Today, it's five of our favorite classic game collections. Number one is Midway Arcade Treasures 2. Number two is WarioWare Inc. Mega Micro Games. Number three, Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. Number four, Mega Man Anniversary Collection. And number five, Intellivision Lives. All right, you guys, two massive games to talk about in Versus today. We have Knights of the Old Republic 2 from LucasArts for the Xbox. It's going up against Lord of the Rings, The Third Age, which right. is available for all three platforms. We also looked at that on the Xbox. What did you think of the visuals for these two giant movie-themed role-playing games? I got to tell you that Lord of the Rings, The Third Age, has some of the best presentation really it does. and graphics yep. and special effects. It is unbelievable. You're what, sitting this is, there. This is four for four with EA and their Lord of the Rings games they based on really the Peter Jackson movies. Nailing. And this one, I think, is the best looking overall, the best best presentation overall out of all of their Lord of the Rings games. Now, whereas in KOTOR, you're talking about a lot of the same kind of visual look that we saw in the last year's game. It definitely doesn't have the presentation, but no. you do get to see quite a bit of the Star Wars universe. You get to go to for the Onderon millionth and time. Dantooine. There's different worlds that you get to explore. After I played Lord of the Rings, I was very unimpressed. Well, I, I agree with you. I think Lord of the Rings looks a lot better, so we're, we're going to give the visual nod to Lord of the Rings. Right. How about audio? Audio. I, I'll go on record as saying that I think Lord of the Rings, the third age, has some of the best audio in a video game ever of all time. I think Ian McKellen should narrate every game. The voice acting and the script yes, writing it's awesome. was phenomenal. Yeah. You're not playing in the Lord of the Rings game. You're not just like in Star in the Star Wars game. You're not playing the traditional characters that you've seen you're, in the movies. You're playing someone in that world. Exactly, and the same and, thing with Star Wars. And the sound design of the effects and everything, unbelievable. But I'll tell you what they do perfectly in this game that a lot of games drop the ball on, especially movie ones, yeah. is the music integration 
in Lord of the Rings is so phenomenal. They took that movie score and kept it flowing and used the right parts of the score for the right time. Yeah, it's beautiful. It was absolutely stunning and phenomenal. KOTOR 2 is no slouch either, though. The audio in that game is terrific. They've got all this, But the know, voiceover the, acting I like the script the vo wasn't I, as good. I like the voiceover it acting. It wasn't even close, Well, I'll though. tell you this. There's a lot more of it in KOTOR 2 than there is in the Lord of the Rings game. You meet a ton of characters. Right. There's lots of different people talking all the time. The Star Wars music sounds fantastic. All the force effects sound great. The lightsaber dueling, you know, the ships flying across, all the, the different cut sequences that they had in the game look amazing and sound amazing. I, you know, it's hard to, to, to be disappointed in the audio department with KOTOR 2. But again, I agree with you. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. I mean, they really raised the bar. It's amazing. Okay, well, here it is. Gameplay-wise, I can probably guess which one you like better, but yeah, uh, game do play. tell. I normally don't like turn-based combat. In, in fact, I never do. Right. But this Lord of the Rings game made it a lot more simple. Yeah. And that's what I liked about it is that I think it's going to open up to a broader audience. They really simplified because it. Because they, I, I don't want to say dumbed it down, but they... They did, but in a smart way. Yes. And it was the same thing that they did with uh, Battle for Middle Earth. They, they trimmed out all of the, you know, the micromanagement that can, you know, confuse people sometimes. These turn-based games, I'll tell you what I hate about them, and, yeah. and even Lord of the Rings does this, yeah. is you do your move, and then your guy goes walking up, right. hits the guy, and then goes walking back on what what was that it's and a, it really pulled me out of it's the experience a, it's a cerebral experience it's, it's, cerebral this it's about trying to figure out what the best tactics are what the best strategies are for taking down the why opponents. couldn't they have the guys stay in battle well it, it's it's a different at kind least. of gameplay at least yeah. i mean that's what kotor does well i think the fighting and the combat engine even though it is turn-based in kotor 2 but it's it feels so more dynamic and it feels more like it's happening in real time menu, they don't cut it's away so confusing it isn't the hardcore turn-based combat people might like kotor better yeah then i the, agree i sense a good thing has happened you're starting to like turn-based combat no well, hold on you now. Just i gotta, never said that you gotta go all I the way man i never once said that come i join I us over to here like come us. join us it's no, fun i just stay over here i'm gonna here. get you the advanced wars no, game no, pretty soon no. and fire emblem you're gonna have I a lot of fun i didn't say i that. liked turn-based combat yeah. i said this one was acceptable I, because the production I think quality we get you was so good a t-shirt i now like turn-based no what are you gonna give lord of the rings the third age i'm giving it an 8.5 that's a high score for me. I'm giving it a 9, and what are you going to give KOTOR 2? I'm giving that a 7. I'm also giving that a 9. But if you collect both of our scores, you'll see that Lord of the Lord Rings, Rings, the third age... That would get the 9. Yeah, that one's the, the slightly better one, but if you're a big RPG fan, got to get them both. Today on the show, we took a look at OutRun 2. Now, we loved all the Ferraris in this game, and the online play was pretty fun, but the graphics and the gameplay were both pretty dated. Mario Party 6, 80 different mini games and the use of the microphone were pretty cool, but how can they be up to six already? Sid Meier's Pirates, now there's tons of cool activities and it was really fun to be a pirate in this game, but Tommy wasn't impressed with the presentation or the repetitive gameplay. In Versus, it was Lord of the Rings The Third Age, which is a very flashy, very fun role-playing game against Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, which is also a great RPG with a terrific cinematic presentation. Based on the scores, we had to give Lord of the Rings the slight nod, although both RPGs are really, really cool.